Alright, so today is the Jonathan's last day in Taiwan. Yeah, it's my last day. I had a great time, but uh, the, the weather today is pretty indicative of how it has been every day. This is why the actor told me not to come in August, but I but didn't listen I to know? him. We were going to go tubing today, but the water level was still too high. So instead, we came up to the mountains to get rained on. Yeah. Jonathan hasn't experienced high mountain rain, only the the plains rain. Yeah, it's so, very warm down there. Yeah, we're trying to give them all of the different types of rain in Taiwan. So we've had plains rain, we had light rain, we had typhoon, and now we're trying to get some of that good old just summer afternoon high mountain rain. We have this umbrella because even though we're going to a waterfall and we might jump in, we don't want to get wet. That was a joke. It is more comfortable with an umbrella. It was a though. joke. I just couldn't think of a response. I had something witty to say and then and then it just never happened. There's Ali waterfall way off in the distance. Can't see it because it's a wide angle lens, but just trust me, it's there. So I was thinking more about our conversation yesterday uh -huh. about um, sort of the culture of outdoor activities. Yeah, we started pretty young with all this stuff. Yeah, well, one of the things I thought about is that for um, it basically uh, in the United States, um, there's a culture of preparing kids to do stuff outdoors and building their confidence. Um, I mean, it's, there's differences between different uh, races and classes, but in general, I, th I think like people in our socioeconomic group typically start taking swimming lessons when they're four or five. Um, I think and, it's and even that, earlier than that. that, I, that I, I think that kids go into the water earlier than that oh, with, right, their, right. with their parents, but I'm talking about formal lessons in a group oh, sure, of sure. kids with the same age. I, I think that um, also there's this thing where the um, the parents with like infants, I'm talking like six months old or something, uh, they just go down to the local pool. Like I think I think that all the neighborhood kids were, it was there for the moms to sort of hang out in the pool and uh, we have the a, kids would just float around. You know, we have a baby, she's eight months old now and we take her into the water. Oh, there you, you go. Know, with with us, obviously we have to hold her the whole time. I think that, uh, I think that was it. There's not gonna be any more rain for the rest of the day. Probably not even the rest of the month. Just thunder. Yeah, so, don't 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 worry about that thunder. It doesn't mean anything. On, 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 and um, besides the swimming, I think there's a deliberate um, culture and effort of like building kids' confidence and character through outdoor activities. So, for example, um, scouting, like the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, yeah, started. I, I believe they started in the late 1800s when people felt like. You know, kids were growing up too much in the city and because the United States, they, they said what well, they closed the frontier, meaning everywhere in the United States had a um, settlement, had a this is something like the population density was more than one per square mile. Um, Damn. I, know, I know that I know that doesn't sound very much, but compared to what had been the case before. Right. Um, and that, that that was basically meant the population was distributed across the continent. And uh, with that, there came an anxi anxieties about basically Americans losing their character. Um, I think particularly um, masculine character. If you That's think right. About we're, we're not as manly as we used to be. Well, if you think about my great grandpappy, he'd just go into the forest with a with a club, and he'd come back with two dead beavers. He'd make himself a hat and dinner, and <laughs> all that before noon. Nowadays. Go to the grocery store. And you can't they don't even, even buy beaver. They don't even sell beaver. You gotta get that cheap cow substitute beaver. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and hats come in a boat from China. So, just to say that you know, Boy Scouts, uh, Girl Scouts, that is deliberate outdoor activity. Also, um, uh, summer camp. Yeah, it's yeah. very popular, but not academic summer camp. I mean, there's that as well, but I mean, summer camp where you are hiking, doing rope, high, high angle ropes courses. I went to a um, native, something's dead around here. Is it a beaver? <laughs> Maybe. I, I went to a 
Native American summer camp. And in that summer camp, there was no electricity. And we lived in a teepee. And every day was sort of a different outdoor activity. Uh, we weren't allowed uh, any metal even. We didn't have no metal. I think we were using like stone knives and stuff. And we would go through hikes through the forest and we would, you know, cut branches and make stuff out of them. And we'd make fires with, you know, just a piece of string and a, and a, and a piece of wood. Don't ask me to do it now. I tried recently and then I'm not good at it. So when I was, uh, I think I was 13 or 14, yeah? I went on a two week camp in the mountains in Virginia. The first week was backpacking and the second week was uh, canoeing. Or I uh, can't Jeez. remember if it was a canoe or a kayak. That sounds awesome. Um, I wish I had gone on that trip. And it was a whole time with the same group of kids that were the same age with, you know, uh, maybe four, three or four guides. Oh, we did that too. Actually, I think I might have been scheduled to go on the sort of the same trip that, you know, you went on like a few years later. And then we got up to the Appalachian and it just rained all the time. Uh, sure. So we didn't get to go uh, kayaking. Right. Uh, but we did go um, do like hiking and stuff. Right. And there's all these ropes courses. Yep. So yeah. we did things like that. Ropes like courses even, are very popular in this state. Absolutely. So even with um, families who don't send their kids to um, overnight camp, day camp in the summer typically will still include outdoor physical activities and confidence building activities like ropes courses. I, I don't know if you even have something like that here in Taiwan. But. Ropes courses, there's gotta, there's gotta be some, I don't remember. A ropes course, uh, for those who don't know, it's just like a bunch of uh, nets sort of strung between trees and then there's maybe some like rope bridges and you have to like sort of climb through it. It's a pretty fun activity. Let's go in the less water here. Yeah, it could involve um, scaling ladders. I guess um, it's not gonna matter here. Woohoo! Wow, Jonathan, you're playing in the water. Yep. How's your confidence? Wet. Also, my shoes need to be tight. It's actually turned out to be quite a nice day. So, just to say there's a, a long cultural history of sending kids to do outdoor activities with and without their parents. Right, and also we went to the local pool all the time growing up. We were always in the in the pool. Well, like not the only boat. that, but we had a pond uh, in oh, our. That's right. There was a pond. Yeah, I almost drowned in it when I was three. Did they close the pond after that? No. Nah. <laughs> Did you go swimming again after that? I probably went swimming the next day. So when I was three, I was uh, chasing uh, like a red kickball into the pond, and uh, wasn't a very good swimmer, and. Uh, also, That's there, as far there, as I remember, but there weren't uh, any adults around either. Yeah, there were no adults around. So you, you probably were not supposed to be playing near the pond. Yeah, probably not. We were we were just running around the neighborhood. It wasn't uh, related to. Um, was that three or five? I don't know. I think you were more like five. Yeah, okay, so that was probably five. Yeah, three. I wouldn't have been running around at, at three. So, the so five years old running around, and the ball went into the pond. I jumped in after it. And then I got my picture in the local paper because an ambulance came and I had to be uh, resuscitated. I was all blue. Um, why did it take so long for me to drown? You mean until you were five? No, I mean like, I mean it must have taken a while for the ambulance to get there. And I mean, I remember Damon ran and got his mom and his mom ran down. We're talking, you know, probably, no, no less than 10 minutes. I'm sure it was less than that. 10 minutes for him to run to his house, grab his mom. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it was less than that. Okay. Um, I, I would imagine like four minutes, three or four minutes. Well, good um, on Damon. I mean, how did he even know I was drowning? Like one of the... the I think you were just in the water oh. and couldn't get out probably. Um, I don't, I don't, I mean, I have no memory of it, but uh, no, no, I had to be drowning because I, I turned blue. I was unconscious. But I, I, all I'm saying is I don't think he waited that long. Oh, right, 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 right. He just, he, he's just being a little brat and he ran to tell on me. I don't know. But, uh, but one thing is, is actually true about drownings is that most drownings happen with somebody around, like, you, like with an adult around. And 
they just don't know that the child is drowning. Actually, um, I'll send you a link which you can put on this if, yeah. if you want to. Okay. Which is a, an excellent article. I typically share it on okay. Facebook every summer okay. about how to recognize Safe, the safety drowning. First. Um, yeah. Because actually most drowning victims don't thrash. Around yeah, yeah, like yeah, it's not thrashing expect. around like you see in the movies or something. Absolutely. It's uh, more like maybe just you see a head going up and down a little bit. Exactly. Um, so uh, it, it'll be in English, but I'll, I'll share the link with you. But I imagine um, it has some photos or like pictures like of what to look for. Google Translate may be able to do a bad job of translating it into Chinese. Yeah, it's actually okay for English to Chinese, not as good for Chinese English. Uh, but anyway, anyway, we'll put that link at the bottom and also try to find an equivalent uh, in Taiwan. Uh, but but really it's like uh, uh, most drownings, the people around are just surprised to find out later that the person next to them drowned because uh, it didn't, didn't look like it. Um, yeah. I remember the one thing that was sort of, I think helped build a lot of water confidence was that the, the pool we grew up near had a diving board. Uh -huh. I don't know what it's like today. I know a lot of places have taken out diving boards for liability issues, but they're very rare in Taiwan. Uh -huh. Like the local, just the local pool, you know, maybe it has a diving board or something, but it's for specific purposes. You can't, it's not just there for everybody to use all uh, the and time. And you're talking about a low springboard when you say that. Yeah, this was a, probably a one meter springboard. That's not low, it was high. Maybe they had two? I think they had two. One uh, meter springboard is quite high. Okay, so I, I, I don't, I don't yeah. remember what they had. Yeah, I think they had a springboard that was just a uh, pool level and then a one meter springboard. So, uh, now you had to take some sort of... Hang on, it's going to be really loud here. We're at a, okay. we're at a waterfall. Yeah. This is where I was talking about the swim. Okay. Yeah, the water here is freezing. This is what water is always like in the high mountains. Uh, I mean, we're not that high. We're at like 1600 probably. So that's pretty high. It's high enough for it to be cold. It means, you know, that water is coming from probably a minimum of like 2000. So, uh, we got driven the whole way. That was pretty easy. That one rock. <laughs> the but rock nice. that you didn't see? Yeah, but it's nice. It's nice to walk. I agree. So now to, you know, the deep end of the pool where the diving board was, was probably about two and a half meters deep. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure you had to be a certain age and probably pass some sort of swim test. I think we had to, to, to use the diving board. I think we had to take stuff off the bottom. I think they'd throw something into the bottom and we had to swim down and grab it and come back up. I remember, I remember doing something like that. So that Well, sense. that also became like our favorite game. We'd always, we'd always just throw all sorts of colorful things down there. And then, you know, you, you dive down to get them, yeah. Um, I think that's also how they teach very young children to swim, but in, obviously in shallow areas, not in, right. you know, but you put them in like a meter of water and then you just have them jump down and, and do it. So I, also going to the beach, going to the ocean, which in, in a lot of North America, there's very shallow beaches that are good for, sandy beaches that are good for swimming. Yeah, they still um, have giant waves. Yeah, but, I'm thinking about basically the East Coast from Florida to New Jersey and actually Connecticut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, is, just have, you have a thousand miles of beach basically. Yeah, with only a few places that, that aren't good for swimming. Yeah, so... And, and that's a very popular activity for families and so even quite young kids will go and play in the ocean in small waves at low tide where the water's shallow. Yeah, and also because there's sort of that range there and it goes in, it kind of allows us to um, like you can go gra in, gradually uh, yeah. build build to higher. Um, but I remember that even at a young age, we were playing in really giant waves. Like when we were at Yopan Beach, uh -huh. I was probably about eight years old there. Uh -huh. um, those waves were big. I saw. Those, I mean, those, those were, those were, and I think we had a, that goes up to the village. I think we had like an inflatable hot dog or something like that too. Oh, I'm sure we did. Yeah, I remember I, we had. You've always liked inflatables? Yeah, I know. I, yeah, <laughs> it's actually funny. I have been searching all over the internet for a giant inflatable hot dog <laughs> and I have not been able to find one. So you want to blow up wiener? Yeah, but it was like, yeah, but it was like in a bun and I remember it had ketchup on top. It had like the little S kind of ketchup on top. It was, it was fantastic. I think I have a picture of us 
at Yopon Beach and there's a cake there and it's my sixth birthday. That is very plausible because and you then, were born in the summer. Yeah, and then I also have a picture of us in our underwear. Uh, I'm sure it's showing right now in the video uh, where we are. I, I know what at picture the beach. you're talking about. Yeah, and those I'm waves are pretty little, big. Like, Superman whitey tidies or something? Yeah. And yeah, I think I just, mine are just white. I think you're probably like two and I'm four or something like that. Yeah, and we were playing in the ocean there. Yep. Yeah, so um, I, I, I remember that when we were going in the big waves, I had water wings. So, so I was playing in the big waves when I was not really a good swimmer. But dad was right there. Yeah, yeah, dad was right there. Yeah, and of course nothing happened. Dad was there. I did have floats. I had water wings. Um, water wings are great because you still have the flexibility of swimming. It's not like a life jacket which sort of prevents right. you from swimming. Um, and it just sort of keeps your head above the water. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, you know, maybe at that, probably at that point I could swim in a pool, but like the ocean, it's actually easier to swim in, but waves are complicated. We also, um, we went camping at least twice a year, every year when we were young. Yeah, we rain, went, rained every time. We went, um, once we every year we would go once to Hanging Rock State Park and once to Cliffs of the New State Park. So we would go camping in the mountains when we were kids, and um, you, know, you rent a public camp spot. I think it's probably like twenty five dollars for the weekend or something like that. Now it is it's probably cheaper. In some places they're even free. You just have to like register. Uh huh. They have running waters and sh and stuff like that. Yeah, they don't they don't have that kind of campsite here. It's a bit of a shame because it's a really good spot for it. And you can, so in these campsites, you drive up to the campsite and there will be, you know, it rain, it varies, but you know, uh, anywhere from less than a dozen to um, over a hundred campsites in one area. Yeah, but they're, they're all separated a they're, little bit. They're all a little bit separate and you can drive up to each one individually. Yeah, I feel like we found something new, but Asher says he's been here before, so I don't know. It's new to me. Are you freezing? That's too cold. All right. Got your glasses on. Woo! Although it's clear enough to find them. That's, that's true. Although not without your glasses. <laughs> what is that? Woo! It's a nice view. It is amazing here. Wow. It's like an infinity edge pool. Woo! This is the opposite of a jacuzzi. Woo! It's a bing koozie. Ice koozie. Yeah. So, uh... Where were we, Jonathan? Where did we leave off? Uh, we were just in the pool. I meant, where were we in terms of our conversation? Uh, I don't remember. All right, anything else you want to talk about then? We just would just run around as kids. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. And we lived in a, um, like a rural, rural, a rural neighborhood with a lot of distances between the houses and a lot of kids, about 10 children that were close to our age. And we just ran around like crazy. Uh, absolutely. Uh, once we were hooligans. Say, once we were like four years old, basically, we could just run around in a group without supervision. Yeah, because there would be like an older kid. Yeah. Exactly. One kid would be like, you know, six or something. You wanna? But you gotta be side to side here. Well, that's not gonna happen. Is that? <laughs> Nobody, nobody's making the sacrifice to go in the tall grass. Okay. All right. You know what? I'll be the bigger man here. Just walk on the other side. Huh? Oh. No, it's... That's in the, that's in the grass too. No, this way it's just like the cameras. We have a nice framing here, Jonathan. Ah. See, this is the, the kind of things that I do so that we I get know. the shot. Yep. Yeah. That's... You could learn a lot from me. That's the Shao Fei about, way. You could learn a lot from me about maturity, Jonathan. <laughs> um, so, so here, they do that too in the countryside. Uh, like, you know, especially the aboriginals, like you saw we hiked up that place yesterday and there was just some little kids there like yep. fishing basically. And I think that's great. I think that's, uh, that's super cool. Um, but it's not a large portion of the population. Uh -huh. Like the majority of kids, like uh, their after school program is like another school, like, you know, like a language school uh, right. usually. That actually reminded me of something I was going to say, yeah? which is um, when we moved from Israel to the United States, 
So yeah. I was less than. Uh, yeah, you were you were one. I wasn't. I, I, I wasn't was, even born yet. I was right. I was one. Um, actually, I was less than one when we moved, and, with, and we moved in the winter. And then once it warmed up, um, we went on like a three-month camping trip with a one-year-old. With a one-year-old. Okay. In a probably in a station wagon. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and and it would be have been a variety of camping. Man, Dad used to be cool. But I know we went basically from Virginia down the coast to Florida. Um, what were they doing? Looking for like the place to settle or something? No, no. He'd been accepted to. Um, oh, you've been accepted at UNC. to UNC. Yeah, okay. It was just killing time, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got a few weeks to go on a road trip. <laughs> that's how I. That's what I do. So. I don't remember any of it, obviously, but just to say that it was that that a thing that people do, you know, with right. an infant or toddler. Yeah, because that's a very cheap vacation, like a very inexpensive vacation. You just drive everywhere, and you you know you camp. You're not staying in hotels, so it's like a really a good way for a family to travel on a, on a budget. But, but you have to be into it. You have to be into that kind of being a little bit uncomfortable. And Asher knows about being uncomfortable. He's walking around all wet in the cold in the tall grass. This is nothing. Uh, I had something for it, but then it just, yeah. yeah. Insert funny joke here. Cut. Man, we're in the clouds now. I don't even know if we're going to be able to see that waterfall. Right. Well, you saw it from far away, but... Well, we'll no, we'll just go it. here and we'll relax and we'll just sort of wait for the clouds to move. And then we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll take a page out of Nazi's book and we'll go get some soup. Yeah, soup! Nazi really liked that in Taiwan you get soup everywhere, even in the summer. He's a, he's a soup man. So when is it fog and when are you in the clouds? I think when you're at elevation, you're in the clouds, and when you're at sea level, it's fog. But it's the same, it's just a cloud. But it's the same thing. So fog is just a low cloud. Yeah, basically. And when you're at elevation, you're just in a regular cloud. Yeah. So it's not a foggy day, it's a cloudy day. Basically. Makes sense? And if it rains on you, it's a cloud. So this is a bit over overgrown since last I came here. I don't know if that's because it's just summer now or... Well, no, I definitely came in the summer before. But, uh, so, off oftentimes I come here in the winter because that's when they have the, um, the cherry blossom. Two things that I think you really have going for you in Taiwan for outdoor activities. No ticks and no poison ivy. For people who don't know what poison ivy is, it's a plant with a toxic oil on it. And when it comes in contact with your skin, you get a horrible rash. Uh, I'm very sensitive to it. So I get a really big rash with big, wet, pussy blisters that last for about a week. It's really itchy and uncomfortable. I'm immune to it. Or I was when I was a kid. I might not be anymore. Did that ever make you jealous? Uh. Yeah, and it annoyed me, especially when you like pick them and chase me with it. I used to do that. Yeah, I was a, I was a jerk. So that's something that I don't remember, but I'm sure it was like very traumatizing for you. <laughs> I'm sure I deserved it. I mean, you did knock me over and I lost my front teeth, right? I did. Yeah. I pushed you off the table because you were standing on it, peeing onto the sidewalk. You're such a hypocrite. <laughs> Every time we get to like a bridge or something tall, you're like, oh, I got to pee off this. Well, I think as I got older, or I realized you were onto something. Or, or we, you know, was I just marking my territory in a place that you already claimed? <laughs> yeah, so I, I got these front teeth pushed in, um, but they were baby teeth, I think. Yeah. So they, they but they had to be pulled out. And then for a long time, I had like a little gap here. I could stick my tongue before, between it. 
I'll try to find a picture. Uh, but uh, uh, he's to blame for that one. Good thing we have an umbrella. Yeah, but I'm all wet. I don't care anymore. I'm all wet. Yeah. <laughs> you look good though with the. It matches your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Rainy. Sorry. No, we're yeah, this is it's okay. I'm already soaked. We just wait till we're up here. You enjoy that umbrella, Jonathan. I can't use an umbrella without you. Really? Solidarity. Look at that. Brotherly, brotherly solidarity. Completely unnecessary, but uh, nice anyway. Oh, watch this. Look at those clouds. Wow. That is a fast moving cloud. Or fog. It's cloud and we're sticking to it. Looks like a time lapse, but without a time lapse. And the waterfall is sort of gone. Wow.